Hi there, welcome to Noctis on YouTube. Ships are known as one of the most crucial means of transportation in the world. Ships sail through various bodies of water including rivers, lakes and oceans to transport a wide range of goods. To facilitate the easy transportation of these goods, ships are equipped with various compartments, one of which is the cargo hold. The cargo holds a significant role in the world of maritime transport. This is because the cargo hold allows ships to carry a large quantity of various goods. With the presence of cargo holds, ships can efficiently and effectively transport goods between continents. The cargo carried by ships can include general cargo, bulk cargo, liquid cargo, hazardous goods and much more. Additionally, cargo inside a ship can also consist of unitized cargo such as containers, barges, and wheeled cargo. Each ship is designed with specific goals and requirements in mind. Some types of ships are designed to meet different needs by having hybrid features. Meanwhile, some smaller container ships have foldable decks to function as feeder ships. Certain general cargo ships can also carry standard containers as well as bulk cargo. Designing cargo holds on ships requires careful consideration of trade prerequisites and maximizing profit by carrying the maximum volume or weight of cargo or the number of containers, particularly in the case of container ships. There are three types of cargo that can be carried by ships, namely general cargo, bulk cargo, and crude oil products. General cargo itself comprises brake bulk and neo bulk cargo. Brake bulk cargo is transported in large quantities but is broken down into smaller units, such as grains or rice, packed in separate bags and then loaded onto the ship. All items packaged in crates, bags, boxes, barrels, drums, or refrigerated cargo that contains canned fruits and meat fall into this category. On the other hand, neo bulk refers to pre packaged goods, which are counted when loaded and unloaded. The term neo implies something is in a renewed or new state. Some pre packaged goods include heavy machinery, cars, bundled steel, scrap metal, and others. One important factor to consider is that in the case of general cargo, storage factors depend not only on the cargo's density but also on its type and packaging method. Storage factors are also included in evaluating cargo hold space efficiency on the ship. Next, there is bulk cargo, characterized by being unpacked and in large quantities. Bulk cargo can be in a form of solid bulk such as coal, grains, ores, and others. Liquid bulk cargo includes substances ranging from ammonia to natural gas. Another type of cargo carries crude oil or petroleum products typically transported by tanker ships. Eventually, this crude oil is refined into fuel for various vehicles. Typically, cargo holds are located between the forward engine room bulkhead and the forward peak bulkhead. However, in the past, cargo holds were situated on the orlop deck or the lower interior of the ship's hull, usually below the waterline. Overall, the cargo space in merchant ships is divided by transverse watertight bulkheads, creating several compartments for cargo holds. In tanker ships carrying oil, the cargo holds are further divided by longitudinal bulkheads, creating transverse watertight compartments. This is done to limit the free surface effect when tanks are partially filled and to prevent oil spills in case of accidents. To store their cargo, there are several types of cargo holds, including standard cargo holds, refrigerated cargo holds, tween decks, open holds, and hopper holds. Standard cargo holds or general cargo holds are commonly used for transporting various solid and liquid cargoes. Refrigerated cargo holds are used to transport goods that must be kept at low temperatures, such as meat and fruits. To use refrigerated cargo holds, the cargo space must be cooled to a temperature below that of the cargo. Each carton should be filled with a minimum of 5-10% to being randomly inspected from each storage space. Damp, wet, torn, soft, or easily leaking cargo is prohibited from entering the cargo hold. 
After loading the cargo into the ship, the crew must ensure that the refrigerated cargo hold's cooling system remains active and the cargo stays covered with tarpaulin during the journey. During operation, frost that forms on the brine pipes must be carefully removed to avoid falling onto the cargo. When unloading in tropical areas, the ship's crew must avoid loading cargo during the daytime. Then there are tween decks, which are general cargo ships with two or sometimes three decks. The upper deck is known as the main deck or weather deck, while the lower deck is called the tween deck. Furthermore, there are open cargo holds, which have high specifications with large self-propelled gantry cranes. These cargo holds allow the smooth loading of fragile cargo such as pulp and rolled paper without causing any damage. Hopper holds, on the other hand, are typically barge-type vessels that transport commodities such as coal, steel, sand, soil, stones, and waste. Cargo holds are equipped with cargo hatches or deck hatches, which are types of doors used to open or close cargo hold openings or other lower sections of the ship. To make cargo spaces watertight, most cargo holds have watertight hatches. Hatches can also function as trap doors with hinges or covers placed over the cargo hold openings and secured with tarpaulins or special locking systems. Hatches can be designed to be flexible and rolled up on stanchions. Special hatches for small cargo holds have openings to small storage lockers called lazarettes. Most cargo hold hatches have raised edges around them, helping to prevent water from entering the ship. If cargo hold hatches are damaged during a storm, the ship risks sinking. Some ships that sank due to cargo hold hatch damage include MV Derbyshire, MV Kristinaki, Bark Marks, SS Henry Steinbrenner, SS Alfaro, SS Marine Electric, and SS Edmund Fitzgerald. In the maritime world, the term batten down the hatches is used to prepare a ship for bad weather. This may include securing cargo hold covers using pieces of wood to prevent water from entering from any angle. This term can also be used for any deck opening leading to the cargo hold. There are several methods for unloading cargo in cargo holds, especially bulk carriers used for transporting dry bulk cargo. Once the ship is securely docked in the harbor with the correct positioning, the top of the cargo hold or hatch is opened. After ensuring that the hatch is properly open, the next step is to load the cargo into the cargo hold, in this case, grains. Grains are loaded using specialized pipes capable of loading 1,500 tons in one hour. It's important to note that cargo holds can carry as much as 30,000 tons of grains. Once all the grain cargo is loaded into the cargo hold, workers ensure that the grains are evenly distributed. Uneven distribution can lead to the ship's tilting or, in extreme cases, capsizing. The ship's crew also monitors the ship's draft to determine how deep the equinox is in the water. The bottom of the ship is ensured to be not more than 8 meters deep. This is the maximum depth allowed for waters. Upon arrival at the destination port, the cargo will be unloaded using special cranes at the port. After emptying the cargo hold and leaving the port, the next step is to clean the cargo hold in preparation for the next voyage. It should be noted that the cargo hold cleaning process requires a lot of effort and time. Sometimes, cleaning must also be done while the ship is at sea, especially when the cargo carried previously differs from what will be loaded next. For example, a cargo hold that previously carried coal may need to be prepared to carry corn grains on the next voyage. This cleaning process is referred to as the Grain Clean Standard. It is specifically done for cargo holds that will carry grains on the next voyage. During this stage, the crew ensures that the cargo hold and its compartments are free from insects, odors, rust, paint chips, and remnants of the previous cargo. Usually, the cargo hold cleaning process takes several days to complete and involves multiple deck crew members working as a team. To clean the cargo hold from the previous cargo, the crew uses a special water-based cleaning solution. The solution is mixed with regular water and then sprayed onto the dirty surface. High-pressure sprayers are then used to ensure easy removal of dirt. 
After spraying with the cleaning solution, the cleaning crew will rinse away the cleaning solution and any remaining cargo residue using seawater sprayed with high pressure pumps. Following this, the cleaning team will sweep away any remaining dirt and cargo, rinsing the hold until it is clean. They will also focus on cleaning hard to reach areas. Afterward, the cleaning team will ensure proper drying and adequate ventilation in the cargo hold. The wash water and residues will be discharged depending on the hazard level of the cargo. If the cargo is not considered hazardous to the environment, the wash water and residues may be discharged directly into the sea, provided that the ship is underway, outside of special areas, and more than 12 nautical miles or 22 kilometers from the shore. However, if the cargo falls into the hazardous or HME category, the wash water and residues can only be discharged into specialized waste disposal facilities in the port. This is because some hazardous cleaning solution contents include carcinogenic, mutagenic, and reprotoxic substances. In addition to cleaning the cargo hold, the hatch section are also cleaned using a method known as shovel clean. Unlike grain clean standard, the shovel clean process does not require washing but only sweeping away remnants of the previous cargo. Then there is the normal clean method, which is used if the next cargo is similar or compatible with the previous cargo. Similar to grain clean standard, the cargo hold will be cleaned with a cleaning solution and dried to ensure no remnants of the previous cargo. Among these standards, the strictest is the hospital clean standard. This standard requires all services, including the upper decks, tanks, and the lower part of the hatch to have a 100% intact paint layer.